Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is on. Uh, I am not Pastor Wendt. Uh, he is in Grand Rapids this week, so he will be back later in the week for our, our Christmas Eve and Christmas services. So um, follow along today. There's not going to be a sermon today. However, our message is through the uh, readings that we'll be reading, the prophecy of the coming of the Christ child. So I hope that as we read through those and sing our Advent carols that you will be able to get the truth we are trying to uh, uh, give to you today. So let's uh, start with our first hymn. Let's stand for that. And that is hymn number three, Hark the Glad Sound. As we light the candle of love, we pray for those who have never felt love and for those who struggle to love others. Love is patient. Does not hurry. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. 
it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, it always succeeds. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Please turn to page 260 in the front of your hymn book for the opening versicles. This is the day that the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Prepare the way of the Lord. Shower, O heavens, from above. Let the skies rain down righteousness. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading comes from Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 15 through 19. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him, for this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of assembly when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, or we will die. The Lord said to me, What they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. This is the word of the Lord. We'll read Psalm 111 from the front of your book. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. The upright in the congregation. 
Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him, remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them an inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, forms of the fullness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. The epistle reading comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading for the fourth Sunday of Advent comes from John chapter 1. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely. I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. Why then do you baptize as if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one who I am not worthy to, I am not one to know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which we will be called, the Lord our righteousness. He shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Please join me in reciting the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to him. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and was buried. He ascended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
Our first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his root, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And the little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. The young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord. second lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for your God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall, be made, shall become level, and the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of the Lord.
The third lesson is taken from the book of Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. The fourth lesson is from Luke chapter 1, verses 32 through 38. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord.
The fifth lesson is from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 55. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the Lord, the mother of my Lord, should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. This is the word of the Lord. The sixth lesson comes from Matthew chapter 1. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. This is the word of the Lord. The seventh lesson is from Luke chapter 1, verses 67 through 69. His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. This is the word of the Lord.
in our prayers this morning, please stand. Uh, please keep in mind all the people that are listed in our bulletin, those at home, those that are struggling with illness and recovering and are homebound. In particular, this week we have uh, the Cordesero family to pray for. They have all contracted COVID, as well as uh, Palo Bentavenga, who's recovering at this time from COVID. Uh, Karen Comber is in the hospital. Robert Crescio is in hospice care. And Bill Powell and his daughter, uh, we pray for them for the passing of Bill's wife, Judy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord for the gift of divine mercy, of peace and a pardon with all our heart and with all our mind. Let us pray to the Lord for the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith. Let us pray to the Lord for this nation, for our cities and communities. For the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather and for fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. For those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and the orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and dying, and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For the Cordesero family, for Palo Pentavanga, and Karen Comber, and Robert Crescio, and the family of Judy Powell, let us pray to the Lord. Finally, for these and all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God and gracious Father, throughout this Advent season, we have heard that Christ has come in the flesh. He comes to us today in word that we will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Guide us for your Holy Spirit that we may keep firm in your word and faith until we are received into your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. God of truth, as your servant John cried out in the wilderness, strengthen our pastors also to preach your word of truth in the wilderness of this fallen world. We give you thanks for the men who have raised up for this holy task. Bless them and their labors and continue to send workers into your vineyard that there may be bountiful harvest. Lord, in your mercy. Lover of the human race, you sent your son into the womb of the virgin that he might share our nature, forgive our sin and destroy our death. Receive our thanks for those who have departed this life in faith and now await the joyous return of his return. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is both the root of Jesse and the righteous branch of his stump. By Christ's death, you have set him up as an ensign before the peoples to draw all to yourself. By his resurrection, you have silenced the kings who stood against him and taken away the power of death. Grant that as we recall with thankfulness through this advent in the flesh, we may always confess him and remain watchful of his advent and the glory at the last day. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may quickly be lifted up by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Blessed God, you have caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and the comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen.
Please be seated for some announcements. Uh, thank you to everybody that helped out with the service today, our readers, and uh, Paul always providing us with beautiful music on the organ, leading our, our worship today. Uh, we invite you to be back later this week for the services coming up. We have a Christmas Eve service at 7 p.m. and the uh, candlelight service at 11 p.m. And then on Christmas Day, 9.30, uh, Holy Communion service. Uh, Sunday school will resume on January 9th. So we'll have a couple of days or a couple of weeks off for that. Uh, we do plan on uh, Zooming the services this weekend, but we do hope that you are here in person. It is always much more meaningful uh, when you're worshiping in person with us. If you're looking for a church home, we welcome you to consider joining our Messiah family. Uh, we celebrate the Savior's birth this week, so hopefully you and your family will be able to come back and join us for that. Uh, there are offering envelopes in the back for this coming church year, so make sure you pick those up. Uh, we do have fellowship downstairs, so hopefully you can join us for that as well. And a reminder to our deacons, we're going to have a short meeting uh, today uh, sometime after we get done. Any other announcements that we need to make everybody aware of? All right, then, have a blessed Sunday, and please join us for fellowship downstairs. <laughs>